Hi, welcome to this, the first of our series of meditations as we journey through Holy Week together. And I'm sharing these meditations from a little book called Your Sorrow Will Turn to Joy. Today, of course, is Palm Sunday. For centuries, the church has memorialized the first day of Holy Week as Palm Sunday because of the of the palm branches and the cloaks that the people spread out before Jesus as he entered Jerusalem. The Gospel writers tell us a crowd gathered, gushing with excitement, and they lined the road in front of Jesus as he slowly rode into the city. As he made his way one step at a time on the beast of burden on which he sat, a sort of carpet was uh, being sewn together ahead of him. Fresh green palm branches, presumably picked from nearby trees, and thick worn clothing, likely from the backs of the crowds, formed this tapestry of endearment towards Israel's long-awaited Messiah. And according to the Pharisees, this was a problem. But actually it wasn't the palm branches that were the problem, so much as what people were saying. Luke tells us that as Jesus entered Jerusalem, the people began rejoicing and praising God, shouting, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Some Pharisees try to get Jesus to make the crowd stop. They ask him to rebuke the people for what they're saying. The whole blessed is the king bit. The Pharisees get it, you see. This isn't just any phrase. This is the kind of welcome reserved for Israel's saviour. It's a phrase found in the Hebrew scriptures going back to Psalm 118. A psalm that rejoices in the Lord's triumph. By verse 22 of this psalm, the rejected stone has become the cornerstone. This is a marvellous work by God's doing, which then launches the day of salvation. This day of salvation is the long-anticipated deliverance that Israel thought might never come. But it will. It does. And Psalm 118.25 captures the hope. Save us, we pray, O Lord. O Lord, we pray, give us success. Now, this salvation and success is nothing generic. It will come through a person, through the Messiah of God, the one sent to rescue his people. So goes the shout in the psalm, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Without doubt, this rambling crowd in Jerusalem taking its cues from Psalm 118, is declaring Jesus to be the Messiah. That's why the Pharisees tell Jesus to stop the madness. Do you hear what they're saying? They think you're the Messiah. Come to save us. Tell them to shut up. Jesus doesn't stop them, though. He says instead that, that if the people weren't saying it, then the rocks themselves would cry out. Of course, Jesus is the Messiah. He has come to Jerusalem to save his people. And according to the crowd, this was a problem. But actually, it wasn't the salvation part that was a problem so much as, as the way that Jesus would bring salvation. They wanted to be free from the Gentile oppressors, even if by force even if by threats and plagues and a split sea, as they recounted well in their history. They wanted another exodus, one that expelled the Romans. Instead, what they got by Friday morning was a bloodied has-been, a man in Roman custody, rejected by their own leaders, standing next to an infamous, infamous criminal called Barabbas. 
They wanted an incomparable king, but they would see a beaten blasphemer. Or so they thought. The sounds of the crowds this Palm Sunday would later be betrayed by the sounds of another crowd later that week. Blessed is he would soon become crucify him. For this reason, there's something nauseating about today. We read of the response to Jesus, but because we know the story, we're aware that this thrilled welcome doesn't have the final say, at least not when it comes to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And as we feel the short-sighted joy of Sunday's words, their ineffective enthusiasm, we can't help but hear the railing that comes on Friday. If we could listen in on these crowds, we'd hear our shouts along with theirs. We'd hear our praise. And then, by Friday, ashamed, we'd hear our mocking voice call out among the scoffers. At some point in our lives, we've been part of both crowds. Maybe we would have praised him, but at some point too, we would have mocked. It's not the righteous after all whom Jesus came to save, but sinners like us. Who said?